Hello, I'm John Atkins, Managing Psychologist for Pern Candola, Diversity and Inclusion Specialist, and I am an introvert. And if that sounded like a confession, that's because like many people, I sometimes feel the pressure to apologise for who I am. In modern Western society, there's a cultural bias that favours the extrovert over the introvert, with the latter tending to become bogged down with a lot of often negative baggage. But is this right? Is it fair? Are introverts less successful? Are they at a natural disadvantage? What does it mean for diversity and inclusion? Let's begin with explaining what we actually mean by introversion and extroversion. Originally conceptualised by famous psychoanalyst Carl Jung, they describe one of several key aspects of people's preferences and personality makeup. Whereas most might think of introverts as being shy and antisocial and extroverts as being engaging and confident, it is in fact more helpful to consider them in terms of flow of energy. Introverts source their energy from within, from the world of ideas and emotions, and extroverts tend to source their energy from the external world, from activities, places and people. The external world drains energy from those that are more introverted, while it recharges those that are more extroverted. The idea that introverts are self-centred, shy, antisocial or unemotional is completely wrong. In some cases it's the exact opposite. You just may not see it as readily. An extrovert can't understand life until it's lived, and an introvert cannot live life until it's understood. Inherent within this is the understanding that both introverts and extroverts can bring unique and even complementary perspectives to a situation. Neither is necessarily better than the other, and both, when harnessed effectively, can bring considerable benefits to a work context. However, this understanding has been warped over time. Cultural historians have linked this to a shift from a culture of character to a culture of personality. The popularity of magazines like Hello and TV shows like Big Brother and The Apprentice attest to the view that we now seem to culturally favour those who prefer to be in the spotlight. Unfortunately, this cultural bias has crept into the way in which we define excellence at work. Competency frameworks overly emphasise the importance of being socially confident, quick to build relationships, taking risks, making quick decisions. They are, in effect, subtly biasing the system in favour of the extrovert. But the research is less clear on whether these traits are, in fact, more beneficial than being reflective, cautious and self-aware. In fact, research shows that introverts are indeed more likely to be naturally systematic, empathetic, creative and arguably better leaders. But if we're defining excellence in terms of predominantly extroverted qualities, then we risk failing to harness the full spectrum of diverse talent we have available to us. The diversity of our staff and the degree to which they feel included is a critical issue, one that is linked time and time again to productivity, engagement, retention, creativity and even financial success. However, we need to broaden the conversation. Whilst it's important to consider diversity in terms of gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation and so on, we also need to be considering diversity in its fullest sense. Personality and work style being just one of a plethora of additional factors that make us unique. I focused on introversion and extroversion as just one aspect of personality. But even here, we see the need to challenge our assumptions, be aware of our biases and take conscious action to ensure inclusion. If you'd like to know more about this or anything else we do, visit our website at perncandola.com. Thank you.